I'm upgrading the Pi cluster in my home lab. That's these four Raspberry Pis. They're at the heart of my network and they run Pi-hole, a web server, internet monitoring, backups, and a private VPN. Today, I'm not upgrading the Pis, I'm just switching how I run them in the rack. I started off my Pi cluster running in this little standalone setup with the Pis sitting on top of a network switch. Then, when I got my first rack for my home lab, I upgraded to a 3D printed rack mount that let me hot swap pies. Then, my electronics sent me this kit, which is more heavy duty but leaves the pies exposed in the back. That's great for airflow, but not for protection. But this week, UCtronics sent me this box, which has their new fully enclosed hot swap pie rack pro, which is probably overkill for most home labs, but I mean, have you seen the rest of this rack? This video isn't sponsored, and UCtronics actually didn't even ask me to make a video, but since they sent it to me, I'm putting the little sponsored badge on. So let's get started by shutting down the Pis. I'm running four Pis, and well, technically they're not in a cluster right now, they're just running their own things all configured via Ansible. And using Ansible for everything means it's also easy to shut them all down. I'll just run this Ansible command, and it'll shut down all the Pis at the same time. I've been experimenting with Kubernetes for years, but networking in particular has been a hassle for things like PyHole and PyVPN, so right now each Pi is doing its own thing. Like this first Pi is running my Internet Pi project. It runs PyHole, Prometheus, and Grafana, and runs DNS and Internet for the rest of the network. Because of all the data that's written to it, I've been nervous about how long this microSD card will last. I mean, I have backups and the setup is all automated, but it's annoying to have to restore things. I use either Samsung Evo or SanDisk Extreme cards, and they've held up really well, but one thing I want to try out for this Pi especially is booting it off an SSD instead. Even a cheap SSD can be better when the Pi needs to write a lot of data, because even the best microSD cards just aren't built for lots of writes over long periods of time. And UCtronics said their new enclosure should make that problem easier for me. With my old setup, getting an SSD plugged into one of these front USB ports would be a nightmare. With this new rack, supposedly you can mount an SSD directly under each Pi if you want. I'll test that out when we get there. Now a quick aside, long term I might even do Pixie Boot, where you boot the Pis off the network from a NAS and don't have a micro SD card or SSD at all, but that's a video for another time. You might also wonder how these Pis are powered since there's no USB-C cable plugged in, and I just have the network cable plugged in on the front. Well, each Pi has a PoE hat, and PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. This network switch can provide power and ethernet in one connection, and the PoE hat turns that power into something the Pi can use to run without any other power source. It's really convenient, and since the Pis only need a little power, like 7 watts, I can use these really thin patch cables. If you need more power, these cables aren't great for that because the copper wires inside are tiny, but they're perfect for a Pi cluster. If you're interested in any of the parts you see here, I'll have links in the description. But anyways, now that all the pies are shut down, I'll pull out the old rack and I'll go through putting together this new enclosure. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my kids' tables for this since I don't have a better work service over by my rack. It looks like they even customized it with my name here, so that's kinda cool. So we got two rack here's, and here's the actual unit. So each pie gets one of these little sliding trays that you can hot swap. And uh, one of the complaints I did have about the My Electronics unit was that the these little plastic pieces could break off easily. They just kind of snap in and out, and I actually had that happen on a couple. So it's nice to see that on this one it has captive thumb screws. I mean, when you're paying this much money for one of these things, these are the little quality of life improvements that you expect. So this is a... SATA adapter hat that basically provides power for the SATA drive and a mounting place for it. It looks like there's a little bumper or sticker here. And it uses these pogo pins, which these aren't the best things in the world for a secure connection, um, but you know they, they usually work pretty well. And I think that they just bump onto the Pi. What we need to do at this point is mount the Pi to this board, and hopefully that should go pretty quickly. And of course I'm using the Linus Tech Tips. This is the stealth screwdriver. Uh, for this, um, I'm going to switch to the smaller number one bit. The uh, screwdriver has been working pretty well. It is a little big. That's my only complaint for electronics, computers, things like that. It's a little bigger than the screwdrivers I'm used to, but it's it's pretty good. I do like how the ratchet is so smooth and soft. Also realizing the uh, LTT screwdriver only has the one size of a hex socket. Um, and it's not quite small enough for these, so I'm going to use my other driver to try to 
get these loose. We have the first pie ready to go. That has a nice satisfying sound to it. Dre has the power button and the OLED installed already. Now this is a maker disc SSD. This was sent to me, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so by Cytron. And uh, they make a line of SSDs, NVMe drives, things like that for specifically made for the Raspberry Pi community. They come preloaded with an OS and everything. For this one, I'm gonna put it in here and then I'm gonna transfer the contents of the micro SD card to it. So we'll see how that performs over time. And it says on here that I just slide it in like so. That was simply enough. And then SD card adapter. So it's just a little ribbon cable with a little <laughs> micro SD PCB in here. And it looks like the next step is to mount this onto here with M2.5 screws. So for now, I'm just gonna do the SSD on this first Pi because the other Pis don't log a lot of data to their micro SD card, so it's not a big deal for those. Then we have a Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna put the SD card adapter into the Pi. And the most important thing is to make sure that these pogo pins line up. So I don't know if you can see that well, but uh, these need to line up and be on on the spots where they need to contact to give power to the Pi and power to the board. And because I'm using the PoE hat, I'm using these standoffs that will hold it at the right height to plug it into the board. I'll put the PoE hat back on the Pi to provide power, and I'll screw these guys back in. At this point, we have the Pi and the PoE hat installed on the board, and underneath, you can kind of see it in there, is the uh, SSD underneath. And I only put in two screws because the screws didn't line up perfectly on this side, you can see. And so they started stripping, so I don't wanna strip the screw holes in the SSD. Uh, but next we need to connect the OLED to the board and the power button also to the board. Goes in this way, right there. And a power cable to the power button. All right, so those are connected. And then the last part to connect is our little USB to USB adapter. This is kind of a, a hack that you have to do with these Pies because they only have USB ports. They don't have internal SATA or anything like that. And I believe that this is ready to go. I guess I should probably take this micro SD card and stick it in here. So it'll boot off that. And one down, four to go. In the interest of keeping my actual network online here, I'm actually going to work on mounting this rack unit up so that I can get, at least get my DNS back online because that's what this one is doing. And I don't have any DNS redundancy right now. I do have to say, at least for rack mounting stuff, this uh, screwdriver is a significant upgrade for one-handed operation. A lot of times I'm doing things in my rack single-handedly. I don't have my dad or someone else helping me lift something. So having a, a screwdriver that does have this nice amount of back force and I can do all one-handed is pretty good. I mean, I don't know. I still don't know if I would justify the, the 80 bucks for it shipped, but it's a pretty good screwdriver. All right, I'm going to close this up. One thing I did notice when UC Tronix emailed me about this box was um, I looked at all the pictures and I was like, well, where's their ventilation? I mean, there's a little bit back here. There's these these holes on the bottom and the sides. Uh, but if you if you put SSDs, you can see this hole is blocked pretty much completely. And uh, this hole back here is just for if you wanna provide USB-C power, so there'd be a cable coming through it. There's not a lot of ventilation on this box. Um, so that's one thing that I asked them about, and they said that they might do a revision that adds uh, mounting points for maybe 40 millimeter fans or something like that. You could put a Noxua fan maybe on the side. Hopefully, the Pies are usually pretty low power don't require a ton of cooling, but they do need some airflow. So we'll see how that works. There are a lot of screws on the back here. There's two on each side and then three across the back. I don't think, I think I'll just leave off these side screws because it feels pretty secure already. And it's not like this case is gonna be going in my car or anything, you know.
and possibly the most important part, the peel. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in and see what happens. I'm pretty sure that this Pi is still set to boot off the micro SD card first, but some Pis you can set them to boot off USB first, and I don't know if the SSD in there has an OS on it already. I also don't think that the screen will work until I add some software on the Pi to make it display what I want. And I'm not sure how the power button works either, but we'll see in what happens. Looks like there is a power LED, so that's cool. It lets you see if it's powered on. And there's an SSD activity light and an SD card activity light. And the screen comes on, but I think it's just gonna stay like that until I set the software up on the Pi. But it looks like I just have three more to go and I should be finished with this and then I'll start getting some test data and see how I like it. So, this isn't going to reach. I'm gonna switch back to one of my old longer cables. I keep things clean, so I'm going to switch to this, come up into the neat patch, and then down to the Pi because aesthetics. Everything is running. I'm gonna go check on the computer if they're all up and, and back online. It looks like they are. They all look like they have the right activity. It's funny, the SSD LED is on on all three of these, even though there's no SSD installed. So I guess that just is on and then it blinks off if there's activity or something like that. And right, I'm gonna check if all of them are up by running Ansible's ping module. That just pings all the servers and makes sure they're running. And it looks like there's success everywhere. So they're all up and running and uh, I'm gonna check on their temperatures. So I did measure the temperatures over the past few days, and I also changed my shirt. If you also like cosplaying as a sysadmin, check out all the colors for this shirt at redshirtjeff.com. But I measured the temperatures, and while the pies aren't throttling, the little whiny fans on the PoE hats kick in a lot more now. In the open air, the pies never got above 55 degrees Celsius. Inside this box, without as much air to breathe, they push 60 to 70 degrees. It's not bad, but I do like silence, so I'm gonna mod the case with a 40 millimeter Noctua fan soon. I cloned the OS to the SSD using our Pi clone, which was super easy and only took like five minutes. Then I shut down the Pi, pulled the micro SD card, and booted it back up. The SSD was working great, and hopefully that'll give this Pi another few years of life as my Pi hold, DNS, and internet monitor. As much as I like the UC Tronics logo on the screens, I also wanted to customize that screen so it showed more helpful information. The assembly guide has instructions for enabling the power button and getting the screen working, so I followed those instructions and got it all working. I even automated the whole setup process in this Ansible playbook, but I did find a couple little quirks, so I reported them to UC Tronics. I'll probably just write my own script at some point. But I think the biggest question for most people is whether this thing is worth almost 300 bucks. I think for someone like me, Probably. All the little quality of life improvements crammed into a 1U enclosure are really nice. So far the ventilation, which isn't even technically a problem, just an annoyance, is the only real downside to this design. I love the hot swap trays, I think the SSD hat and front panel features are executed well, and the build quality is great. It's good enough I'm going to keep running with it for now, but who knows what's coming next. I hear the compute blade is gearing up for launch, and I know the second I can get my hands on some of those boards, they'll be cranking up density so I could fit way more pies in one U of rack space. Subscribe so you see my next pie and home lab upgrades, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.